So here's a simple question. 200 is 25 percent more than x. Find x. Here's an approach that I've seen people try. Uh, the argument is that because 200 is 25 percent more than x, we can say that x is 25 percent less than 200. So that is basically uh, 200 minus 25 percent of 200 would be one fourth of 200, which is 50 is equal to 150. All right? Well, it turns out this is wrong because if 200 is 25 percent more than x, x is not 25 percent less than 200, and we have to elaborate on this because I, this is possibly one of the most common mistakes that I've seen people make while doing percentages. Let's see what's happening. Now the correct answer is uh, 160 and we'll take it from there. So we have 160 and 160 is increased by 25 percent to get 200. 25 percent is one fourth so one fourth of 160 is 40 and 200. Now the question is quite simply by what percentage you have to reduce 200 to get 160 and the answer as I've already mentioned is not a reduction of 25 percent. Let's see what happens. The decrease percent is decreased by original which is a reduction of 40 where the starting number was not 160 it was 200. Therefore we get one five, one fifth which is 20 percent. It's a 20 percent reduction. So uh, uh, a 25 percent increase if you have to negate it using a percentage decrease it's going to be 20 percent. So two questions arise at this point. One is why are these numbers different? Two is can you quantify and possibly formalize this? Let's take this one by one. Uh, as to the question of why it is different, it is very evident that the increase percentage that we are dealing with is it's the same increase of 40 but it's on a base of 160. Right? So then uh, uh, the number 160 increases to 200. Now when you're reducing 40, the decrease by original is 40 by 200. These two fractions are different and that is why we get two different percentages. Quite simple. Now, but can we can we uh, explain the exact number? The, I've just explained why it is not 25, but why is it 20? And what if I give a 30 percent increase, what will be the number uh, uh, below the second arrow. If I give 50 percent uh, increase, what is the de corresponding decrease? If I give you an i percent increase without giving you a number, can you give me an expression in i uh, for the decrease percentage? Some some expression instead of a number, but that expression is a function of i. Can we do all of these things? That is what we mean by quantifying this or formalizing this uh, relation. Now, 25 and 20 doesn't necessarily make sense. I'm going to remove this i as well. We'll come back to it. Now, I can just give other pairs that work here if you want. And before that, I want to just point out that it doesn't matter what the actual starting value is. I could replace 160 by A and simply say if A is increased by 25% to get B, then B will have to be reduced by 20% to get back to A. It's it really doesn't depend on any specific number that we have written there. It this 20 depends only on the 25. It is invariant of the starting value and the final value. Anyways, if you want another couple of pairs, uh, so for example, as plus 50 percent is negated by a uh, minus 33.3 percent. A uh, plus 100 percent is negated by a minus 50 percent. Just to give two examples. And there doesn't seem to be a really simple relation between these two numbers. Can you find one from the other using a simple formula? It's not evident, but that's only because you're looking at it as changed by original. I also mentioned that the increase person can be calculated as uh, final value by initial value minus one, right? And what is what about the decrease? It is final value by initial value minus one. 
it's because of these minus ones that you do not immediately see the relation between the 25 and the minus 20. But now that we have written these equations here, uh, if I ask you to write a formula that relates i person and d person, it becomes somewhat evident that you just have to take the b by a and the a by b and multiply them together to get 1. At which point I can substitute the b by a with 1 plus i percent from the first equation. And the second equation will also give 1 plus d percent. That's if you directly want to get minus 20 as the answer. Uh, but by ignoring the sign convention, I can simply write as 1 minus d percent. So here you will get 20, the value of d directly as 20 and then you will say it's a 20 percent reduction if you use minus. If you use plus, you'll get the value of d as minus 20. Doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go with 1 plus d percent into 1 minus i percent is equal to 1. This is the relation between the increase percent and the corresponding decrease percent that will negate the change. And uh, that is where you're getting the plus 25 and the minus 20 from is just the fractions being flipped. Final by initial, five, uh, 200 by 160. And here the final by initial is 160 by 200. Clearly the reciprocals of each other and that reciprocal nature is basically what's giving us the relation between the I and the D. And you'll see that if you look at these, you know, the scaling factors by which you multiply to affect a percentage change, it makes a lot of sense. The 25% is basically 5 by 4 and the 20% reduction means you have to multiply by 4 by 5. Reciprocals. Let's look at the other two examples. When you increase a number by 50%, that means the new number is 150% of the old number, which means it is 3 by 2 times the old number. And when you reduce something by 33%, the new number becomes 66.6% of the old number or two thirds. Again, you see that these two scaling factors are reciprocals. And uh, increasing by 100% is basically doubling a number, while reduction by 50% is basically halving a number. Again, 2 into 1 by 2 is 1. And that's basically the relation between these two numbers.